Uh, thanks for coming for to, the, to the presentation. Uh, I didn't expect that there would be so many people. And frankly speaking, I've never presented before such a huge audience. So I should apologize in advance uh, if I will forget how to speak or faint. Just wake me up. I will proceed where, from where I stopped. So the presentation today, the name of the presentation is how an exiled pirate media outlet breaks through the Kremlin's propaganda firewall. The long name, uh, pretty straightforward. And today I would like to tell you uh, the story of the pirate media. Uh, the story of the small company that has become the most important, the biggest independent Russian-speaking media outlet that has been blocked, but yet but still, we have millions of readers within Russian borders. Also, I'm going to tell you about the, what actually happens within Russia in regards of uh, censorship. And tell you that Russia has become one of the most uh, technically advanced countries in these regards. Uh, I'll tell you uh, how being such a bin, big pin in the ass of the government uh, Medusa are still alive. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you our forecast on what's going to happen next in upcoming years. Is it okay with you? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, uh, my name is Alex. I'm head of technical department. I should apologize for the photo of myself. It's the design team who put it there. A um, couple words about myself. I started as a network engineer and I'm doing IT stuff for almost 18 years already. And I feel like I'm the dumbest person in this conference. The other day I approached some kids because I thought they will be smart at the same level and smart as, as myself, you know. And they told me that they managed to hijack transportation system. <laughs> and it was like big impact uh, at my ego, so I'm feeling now the dumbest person here. Sorry for that. Couple words about the technical team of Medusa. It's about like 20 person. It's developers, designers, testers, product, project people. And normally, before the war in Ukraine, we were focused on the development of our products, mobile application, website, site products, whatever, our infrastructure, podcast distribution, so on and so forth. After the war, since we become, once again, the biggest pin in the ass of the government, uh, we started spending the waste, the waste part of our time uh, trying to protect ourselves from attacks and uh, trying to sneak information within Russian Federation. Couple slides about geopolitics. Hope you like it. Uh, this is Russia, if someone doesn't know. Uh, the population of Russia is 133 million, according to Wikipedia. Uh, to give you a comparison, it's pretty much, it's a little bit more than in uh, Mexico and about a half of population of United States of America. Um, I'm asking you to imagine what if all the population, all the people who live in Russia won't be able to receive information except from the information that delivered by government? Just think about that, I'm not saying something. Um, so basically they will receive just propaganda. It's something pretty much like, I guess, in North Korea, for instance. So government decides what information they will get from abroad. Is it good or bad? Just think about that. And tell me afterwards. Also, uh, on the second slide, you can see some more countries which are, with a, which are good friends of Russia. They have lots of similarities. These countries are autocratics, or some would call it uh, dictatorship. These countries are fond of blocking the internet. They are fond of... Uh, pursuing journalists, and they like to get the best out of Russia, you know. 
I'm talking about the knowledge, uh, technologies of censorship and so on and so forth. Together with Russia, it's almost 250 millions of people. It's pretty much the uh, population of United States of America. And the same questions, same question. Think what will happen if all those countries together with Russia will have no access to any information except for what government says to them. Once again, it reminds me of Soviet Union. We had that before, and maybe some of that, or your parents remember Cold War. So it's not a good thing uh, for people to be scared of uh, die because of like nuclear strike. And the last geopolitical slide, sorry. Uh, you can see it's a good partners of Russia, which is China, Iran, Syria, and of course North Korea. And the, from what we know, these countries are constantly uh, have communication with Russia. They have exchange of knowledge about the technologies. China provides equipment for Russia for censorship. Once again, what might go wrong if all those countries will work together and where it all goes? So here I'm finishing my geopolitical part of the presentation. I think what could go wrong. We will get to this in the end of the presentation. So, and now let's get back to 2014. It's not exactly how it all started. It's not the time when the, like, the ideas of control of the internet has started. It started a little bit before. But in 2014, everything has become turbulent. And these events brought us where we currently are. I'm talking about this uh, massive censorship. I'm talking about the war in Ukraine. I'm talking about all the other bad things that are happening currently. And when I googled what is the most important event in 2014, this is what I found. Ice bucket challenge. I'm pretty sure this is not anyhow related to the massive censorship in Russia, but if it would, I would understand the government. You know. On the other part of the world, at this moment in 2014, when the like, ice bucket challenge was popular, there was some serious events. Euromaidan, uh, it's like when Ukrainian people took down pro-Russian president, annexation of Crimea, and consequent sanctions from European Union and USA against Russia. And I guess uh, we feel that that was the moment when something has changed and Russian government decided to change the direction. They always wanted to control media market and internet, but in 2014, I guess they decided that they need to invest more. And this is the moment when everything has changed. But, I mean, we have a saying, uh, there's no bad things without good things. And in 2014, a company named Medusa was born. The company uh, I will tell you about currently. Basically, the uh, Russian government started interfering uh, to journalistic work. And as you can see from the head heading uh, of the article, uh, they uh, fired uh, editor-in-chief from one of the biggest independent internet media organizations uh, and replaced her with a pro-Kremlin figure. This was because she dis disobeyed, she didn't want to take down some articles and luckily, or I don't know, some, um, a part of her team, uh, a part of uh, Len Taru, left the company together with her and this was the start of the Medusa. And now I will explain why we are talking about the pirate ship. So, Medusa, 2014, uh, the idea of the creation of the media, we called it like, we're gonna be pirates, we will be pirate media. What does it mean? So, we will need a safe heaven, we will be independent from anyone, we will obey no one, we will be self-sufficient, and we constantly will be attacked, uh, we, constantly, we will be persecuted, so apparently we will be killed. So we were like kind of pirates. And you can see the photo. Uh, actually, we have lots of these black flags still in our office, and it, this is one of our like, official symbols. Uh, something like that. So the safe heaven for us became European Union, Union. We started abroad from Russia. This helped us to avoid uh, interferences, 
government can interest sorry it's a complicated word i cannot pronounce it <laughs> governments can affect anyhow our work we decided that it would be decentralized leadership and funding so we will have no single person who owns the company who can affect anyhow us uh, we expected that we will be blocked prosecuted attacked so security was priority for us and we wanted it to be independent from everyone so we started with a technical team i told you about that and uh, everything is built in-house website uh, content management system mobile application everything and the important thing to mention uh, that we decided that we will be different i mean we pirate media we don't want to be like this smart uh, serious news media we would like to appeal to younger generation because we were younger ourselves and we never use this smart language we always used to use the simple language uh, like hey buddy let me explain you what does this new law means so we tried to explain politics through memes through jokes through swear words i don't know something like that we were never boring and another important thing to mention that we were always negative thinkers we were expecting that tomorrow we will be dead i mean tomorrow uh, we will have no money tomorrow we will be persecuted and you can see from the first uh, design actually it didn't change much i mean it was dark because we thought we believe in, in the gotham city something like that so and this negative thinking helped us a lot i will tell a little bit more about that later so moving to today nine years after like i mean it was difficult nine years we was dying i guess four times we was close to death there was like terrible accidents when for instance police planted drugs into the uh, backpack of one hour journalist but now as, as of today right at the at the moment we are the biggest independent russian speaking media outlet the most influential and we still can reach millions of readers within russian federation despite being blocked there is some analytics it's boring i guess the important thing to know last year we have been blocked this year we have become real pirates because since 2023 we are outlawed in russia what does it mean? Uh, everyone who works for Medusa will go to jail. Everyone who partners with Medusa will go to jail. Everyone who donates money to Medusa will go to jail. I'm talking about uh, Russian people. <laughs> so in the meantime, uh, Russia didn't waste time, of course, and Russia was evolving technologically. Uh, this picture, once again, we go back to 2014 this picture actually better explains what was with russia in 2014 in terms of technologies i mean some of you maybe remember these pathetic attempts how they tried to uh, block telegram and never succeeded actually but by now they managed to achieve something that seemed impossible back in the day all the experts like three four years just three four years ago all the technical experts were saying that it is not possible uh, to build something similar to chinese firewall in russia but i can tell you by now they achieved the goal they managed to install dpi pretty much everywhere dpi stands for deep packet inspection it's like special boxes that analyze i mean you guys you're smarter than me you know it <laughs> if you do not know i encourage you to visit packet inspection village please do learn and then get back to me and help me to outsmart this shit you know <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> sorry can i use swear words <laughs> okay sorry for that so on this uh, chart you can see what was the difference between 21 and 2022 how drastically uh, amount of blockings has increased some more graphs at the left hand side you see uh, the chart from our friends roscom svoboda uh, they block 20000 websites every month in average and it gets even worse nowadays and it's not just the pages it's whole sites because normally they block by mask at the right hand side uh, i'm not sure if you can clearly see it 
you can see uh, it, it's, uh, it's the chart from our friends Uni Internet Observatory. And you can see this is the type of websites they're blocking. The biggest bubble is news media. The smaller ones, but still big, are what is it? I cannot see myself. It's circumvention, it's uh, human rights, it's social networks, it's file sharing. So obviously you can see that they're targeting like freedom of information. And what pisses me off more than anything else, the other big bubbles are porn and alcohol. <laughs> so they took information from us, it was fine. But then they took porn and alcohol <laughs> and that's why Russians are so grumpy now. <laughs> and this actually, the, from my Google Analytics from the website, and this is a moment of blocking. You can see at the left-hand side, uh, there is, we hit the top with two million unique readers a day, which is a lot. And the day after the blocking, everything dropped by 90%. So we left pretty much all the audience. So, you are a government. You blocked everything you wanted. All independent media, porn. What's your next step? Circumvention tools. Of course, if you cannot watch porn, you go and find a VPN service to watch porn. They blocked Tor immediately. It still can, you can still use Tor in Russia. However, it's not that easy for ordinary people. They blocked all the major VPN services in Russia, so, and they continue blocking those. Even those that was called like bulletproof, unblockable VPN services are not working well in Russia now. Uh, they even forbid prom any promotion of VPN service or circumvention tools. If you ever would like to uh, have instruction on your, I don't know, social network, how to set up Tor bridges, you will be fined and you will go to jail. Uh, they even started marketing campaign uh, against VPN services or circumvention tools. You can find in YouTube video when they tell you that VPN services are stealing your personal data. I mean, I mean, they are right, partially. Yeah. So another thing uh, that just happened a week ago, they blocked uh, WireGuard and open VPN protocols. So the reason for that is uh, that in Russia have become self-hosted VPN services and normally they would be based on WireGuard, so they blocked it. A couple words about media space control, it's like quite boring for you, I guess. But the important thing, like one of the weird laws that was issued just a couple weeks ago, uh, they obliged all the uh, recommendation services, news services, to disclose to government their algorithms. How smart, it's how evil smart is that, you know? So uh, obviously they will use this algorithm to make sure that people get in propaganda. What about global companies? So Facebook and Instagram, actually whole meta was uh, get the status of terroristic, terroristic organization in Russia, which means that you, they have been blocked immediately, but it's not that safe for you to use Instagram and uh, uh, Facebook now. Twitter was blocked quite a while ago. YouTube, while I was preparing this presentation today morning, we got the information that in some regions in Russia, YouTube's no longer working. We do not know yet if it's YouTube block or just like some problems. Uh, Google and Apple all the time face uh, different types of pressure. Normally it's like they have a lot of use, they find. Google News has been blocked a while ago, and Google Search has been blocked today. So it's evolving pretty fast. The last time I checked, like several minutes ago, in half of the Russia, Google, Google Search is, not is no longer working. And government pushes people uh, to move to national platform. But sometimes uh, big tech companies help to the Russian government. This happened a week ago when I was preparing the presentation. Apple. Uh, complied with the requirements of government and removed our best news podcast. Fortunately, they get it back in several days, but still, I mean, what will happen if they will remove our mobile application? This doesn't make any sense because Google now blocked in Russia. 
but before, you know, if you go to Russia, you will never find Medusa, even though it's the biggest media outlet. And in top 30 popular uh, Google search, you will uh, find yellow media or propaganda media. Obviously, it's not intentional. Uh, this is because algorithm Medusa is blocked in Russia. That's why Google put it, put, puts it down. But it's, it shouldn't be like that. But how did we survive? I mentioned the negative thinking, and we were preparing to death and to be blocked quite a while ago. So, like several months before we were blocked, we started thinking, what can we do? What will happen if government will block our website, which are like the core product of the news media? And we come up with uh, some ideas. They are not bright at all. We just prepared some kind of the SOS communication, as we call it, like, hey, guys, like the giant banner on the website, hey, guys, we will be blocked as soon as the war starts if the word starts. And you should install VPN, you should do this and that and that and that. You should check our social networks, you should check YouTube channel and so on and so forth. So we invested a lot, like to, we started new podcasts, we started new video shows, uh, we even uh, reinvented newsletters, I mean, which is like in 21st century, who reads newsletters? But I mean, it worked perfectly great for us. And I highlighted the phrase that, what can we do before it's too late? So it's like, this crucial thing. If we would do it later, we wouldn't, we won't be successful. And actually, that's what happened uh, when we were blocked. So people lost access to the website. I showed you the graphic, uh, the chart before. And here you can see how, for instance, social networks boomed. Uh, downloads of our mobile app is like tripled, uh, multiplied by four. And this is newsletter, one of newsletters. There's uh, hundreds of thousands of people signed up immediately. And now one of my favorite parts, the mobile application. This is something we are very proud of. Uh, we had a mobile application from the very beginning. Uh, the reason for that, we, we were, our thinking was that we can put anything we want under the hood of mobile application. So basically, we can integrate some circumvention tools. And actually, that's exactly what we've done right before the blocking, several months before the blocking. We started using like peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, basically, if you install our app, your phone beca becomes a part of like some mesh, pretty much like torrents. I mean, you know how that works. I mean, it, it, and it works well, but I mean, due to some issues with the battery drain, and, you know, people are picky. <laughs> we need, uh, we, we st stopped using the peer-to-peer. -peer. Then we were using some uh, nice, one of the biggest VPN service as a part of our app, uh, but it was blocked together with our VPN services. And we moved to the simpler but yet reliable ways like uh, automated mirror changes, like proxying, something like that. And now we have some co combination of the circumvention tools embedded to the app. And this is something that we're gonna like, evolve, develop further because we are preparing now for the worst. For instance, we have already implemented the precaution of the content. For instance, uh, if you read in the article, the old articles are, are downloaded. And I think that will uh, prove itself when we start using again the peer-to-peer -peer solution. Also, we have the light version that we can feed within our app. So it doesn't, it's like takes just a couple of kilobytes for article. So it will work for the poor connectivity, emergency mode, uh, when we can uh, upload, we have infrastructure for that. We can upload to the Google Cloud services. So this is something that you can hardly block without blocking whole Google, which is happening currently, and lots of other things we're working on. Automated mirror rotation, this is another thing I would like to tell you about because we are very proud of. To make automated mirror rotation, you need three things. The first one, to discover that the link has been blocked, issue a new mirror, and deliver it to the user. Normally, the problem in Russia is discovery. So I know I don't know anyone who managed to solve it, except, except for us, because of the specific of uh, 
these DPI tools around of types of blockings around the Russia because dependent on the region they have different types. Some, sometimes it's like throttling, sometimes they have TLS connection, sometimes they don't have. So basically uh, we're using our mobile app as a probe. So they're probing the mirrors and we have, as soon as we have a lot of uh, network issues above some particular threshold level, we issue a new we issue a new mirror and deliver it to the reader, and it takes like several seconds to get it to the mobile app. This is boring. Okay. I, this is this is this is so much fun. You know, this was like the w w weird idea because I mean, once again, it's 21st century. Who will use PDF, except for me for this presentation? Uh, who uses PDF? And we come up with the like weird idea that. Let's add a functionality that allows you to print out as the PDF file from the website any of articles. Like on the screenshot, you can see it. And actually we designed its, its nice and beautiful design which fits perfectly for printing out. And we were so surprised that 100,000 of people uses this functionality. And we had a lot of stories how grandparents or parents of some people asked them to print this out so they can read it like a newspaper. And I mean, this is weird idea, but at the same time, if it works, then it works. I mean, it's better than people reading Medusa and they understand that anything they get from the government is a propaganda. Yeah, our key idea that we never stop looking for new paths, we're always trying to find some of these weird strange ideas to find the ways how to sneak in information to Russia, to people. Like we have Instagram story generator, we have, uh, we're using instant view from Telegram. It's like, actually, it's the nice thing. Whenever you send Medusa's link to somewhere through Telegram, uh, you will see instant view. You just click it and you will open article within the Telegram. And even if the site blocked, it will be the full article. Light version of the website, we we collaborating with uh, different companies like news aggregators. We providing them, uh, integrate them so they can get our information and so on and so forth. Ah, and nice story, by the way. Uh, there was a guy in Russia who had a radio trans retranslator and he was just broadcasting through the radio our podcasts. Something like that. I mean, if that works, then it works. So what's the bottom line? How much time do I have? Uh, what's the bottom line? Uh, I mean, we are this relatively small company, and obviously we don't have those resources as uh, Russian government has. We don't have like so much money. We don't have. We have a small team, small technical team, but uh, we are inventive, weird, and we are creative, and we have a good will. So, like, and we truly believe in the freedom of information. So people tend to help us, which was surprising for me. And that's why actually I'm here because uh, what I've no from what I've noticed, here are the most like brightest people, the smartest people I ever saw in whole my life. And if you have experience, any experience in circumvention tools, if you have experience in packet inspections, if you know technologies, please reach me out. If there are people from the big, big tech companies, please reach me out. Uh, we need your help. If uh, is there anyone who works for Russian government? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so please reach me out. I have some questions, you know. You, you need to explain me what is going on. <laughs> so we are open for any collaboration, any card of support will do, like resources, knowledge, funding, whatever. Or if you like us, you know, just, or if you never read Medusa, never heard of Medusa, go and check the website at the bottom, like medusa.io slash en, we have an English version. If you can read in Russian, check the Russian version and spread the word about us. And also, uh, you can donate. This is like, this is not malware, by the way. It's just the link to the support site, so you can go, like, and each buck, bucks will matter. And it looks like the last slide, but it's not actually. I have the bonus part of the presentation. So, um, what is the future of internet in Russia? What should we expect in the future? As we see from today's <laughs> presentation, uh, just today they blocked Google, and this is what's gonna happen in upcoming 
days, months, I guess, uh, all the global services that are not complying with uh, Russian requirements, Russian government requirements, will be replaced by Russian services. And this is something that already going on. We can see it. We can see that like Google uh, Chrome is not the most pop popular browser anymore. Uh, circumvention tools will be available only for advanced, uh, technical advanced users, I explained to you before. Uh, from what we know from the leaks, they starting massively using AI tools, and that helps them to faster discover and block the content, including especially audiovisual content. Normally, we used to say that podcasts are below the radars. It's not the case anymore. Uh, we expect they, that will, they will start blocking mirrors fa in a faster way because like a month ago they were blocking once per month. Now they're blocking three times a day. If they will block us like 10 times a day, we can do nothing with that. And so sovereign internet and separation Russian people from outer world. This is something that's going to happen very, very soon. So like my... Uh, you guys, you can read Russian. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we imagine Russian internet within, what will happen with Russian internet within one year from now on. So, I mean, my uh, forecast would be that less than a year before each and every Russian will be isolated from outer information. And we're getting back to my geopolitical slide. So, I mean, we are in negative fingers, and this is last slide, by the way. We are the negative fingers. And I mean, we have the terrible forecasts that this, these countries, this part of the world soon become, at least Russia will become some kind of the North Korea. I mean, yes, this looks like the world collapses for us because we're negative thinkers, but I tell you, you know, we did already, I don't know, we're doing this forecast like four years in a row and the worst scenario are usually uh, the most realistic scenario. And it's pretty accurate. And this was definitely will happen. Within one year, we will have Russia separated from outer world. Within several years, we will have Russia plus uh, CIS, some CIS countries. And just think of what could happen if those countries will collaborate together. But uh, I'm optimistic here. Uh, I mean, I understand that. Medusa, only Medusa cannot, can do nothing with that. But I'm optimistic here because there are so many people who believe uh, in freedom of information, uh, to freedom of speech, uh, so many bright people around. And another thing, we are goodies, definitely. I'm pretty sure about that. So I think that we'll figure it out somehow and the future will prevail. And I guess that's it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And uh, I have these envelopes. If you want uh, to reach me out, there's my contacts here. And there's some nice stickers inside. If you like, you can just approach me. I will give it away. And you can get from the guy over there. So thank you so much. Thank you.